Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about how to read a chest x-ray. So what are chest x-rays? Chest x-rays are frequently performed radiological investigation that you'll be expected to be capable of interpreting. Therefore, before hitting the wards as doctors, it is essential that you develop the ability to interpret chest x-rays of particular importance is the ability to recognize findings that require immediate medical attention. So, you always confirm details first. Always begin by checking the following. Patient details, name, date of birth, date and time the film was taken, and any previous imaging that's useful for comparison. Assess image quality. Then, briefly assess the quality of the image. A mnemonic you may find useful is stripe. So, you begin with rotation. Rotation, the medial aspect of each clavicle should be equidistant from the spinous processes. The spinous processes should be should also be in vertically oriented against the vertebral bodies. Inspiration. Five to six anterior ribs, the lung apices, both costophrenic angles and lateral rib edges should be visible. Projection. Anterior posterior versus posterior anterior film. Tip if there is no label then assume it's a posterior anterior. Also if the scapula are not projected within the chest, it's posterior anterior. Exposure. Left hemidiaphragm visible to the spine and vertebra visible behind heart. So what two are the four things? You need to ensure rotation, inspiration, projection and exposure. So chest extra interpretation. A, B, C, D, E approach. That's a mnemonic. So I begin with A. A is AOA. So let's enter the airway start with the trachea. Is the trachea significantly deviated? The trachea is normally located centrally or just slightly off to the right. If the trachea is deviated, look for anything that could be pushing or pulling at the trachea. Also inspect for any paratracheal masses lymphadenopathy. Pushing of trachea, for example, large pleural effusion, tension pneumothorax, Pushing of trachea such as consolidation with lobar collapse. Rotation of the patient can give the appearance of a deviated trachea. So as mentioned above, check the clavicles to rule out rotation as the cause. So this is a diagram that's showing you pure effusion with tracheal deviation. Carina and bronchi. The carina is located at the point at which the trachea divides into the left and right main bronchus. On a good quality chest x-ray, this division should be visible and is an important landmark when assessing the nasogastric tube placement as the nasogastric tube should bisect the carina if it is correctly placed. The right main bronchus is generally wider, shorter and more vertical than the left main bronchus. As a result, it is more common for inhaled foreign objects to become lodged here as the route is more direct. Depending on the quality of the chest x-ray, you may be able to see the main bronchi branching into further subdivisions of bronchi which supply each envelope. So this is a diagram showing the carina. It's quite clear here. I don't know if you try to zoom in or increase your, reduce the brightness, you'll be able to see it. That's the right main bronchus and the other side is the left main bronchus. Hyla structures. The hyla consists of the main pulmonary vasculature and the major bronchi. Each hyla also has a collection of lymph nodes which aren't usually visible in healthy individuals. The left hilum is often positioned slightly higher than the right, but there is a wide degree of variability between individuals. The hyla are usually the same size, so asymmetry should raise suspicion of pathology. The hilar point is also a very important landmark. Anatomically, it is where the descending pulmonary artery intersects the superior pulmonary vein. When this is lost, think of a lesion here, such as lung tumor or enlarged lymph nodes. Hilar enlargement can be caused by a number of different pathologies. Bilateral symmetrical enlargement is typically associated with sarcoidosis. Unilateral asymmetrical enlargement may be due to underlying malignancy. Abnormal hyla position can also be due to a range of different pathologies. You should, as with the trachea, look for any evidence of the hilum being pushed by an enlarging soft tissue mass or pulse, for example, in lobar collapse. 
B. Breathing. So we start with the lungs. Inspect the lungs. When looking at the chest x-ray, we divide each of the lungs into three zones, each occupying one third of the height of the lung. These zones do not equate to lung lobes because the left lung has has not three but only two lobes. Okay. So it has got three zones but only two lobes. So do not confuse thing between zones and lobes. Inspect each of the zones of the first of the lung first, ensuring that lung markings occupy the entire zone. Compare each zone between lungs, paying close attention for any asymmetry. Some asymmetry is normal and caused by the presence of various anatomical structures, such as the heart. Some lung pathology causes symmetrical changes in the lung fills, which can make it more difficult to recognize. So it's important to keep this in mind. Sample pulmonary edema. Increased airspace shadowing in a given area of the lung field may suggest pathology, for example, consolidation or malignant lesion. The complete absence of lung markings within a segment of the lung field should reach suspicion of pneumothorax. This is a diagram showing a lung tumor. You should be able to see that's where the arrow is pointing on the left side. And then this is a diagram showing right sided pneumonia. So that's consolidation. Pleura. Inspect the pleura. The pleura are not normally visible in healthy individuals unless there is an abnormality such as pleural thickening. Inspect the bodies of each of the lungs to ensure lung markings extend all the way to the edges of the lung fills. If there appears to be an area lacking lung markings with decreased density, this may suggest the presence of a pneumothorax. Fluid hydrothorax or blood hemothorax can also accumulate in the pleural space, causing an area of increased opacity or combination of both a pneumothorax and fluid hydropneumothorax. If a pneumothorax is suspected, you should reassess the trachea for evidence of deviation away from the pneumothorax, which should be in keeping with attention pneumothorax. This is a medical emergency requiring immediate intervention. If attention pneumothorax is suspected clinically, shortness of breath and tracheal deviation, then immediate intervention should be performed without waiting for imaging as this condition will result in death if left untreated. The diagram showing right-sided pneumothorax and the other one showing right pleural thickening in the context of meso mesothelioma. C. Cardiac. Assess the heart size. In a healthy individual, the heart should occupy no more than 50% of the thoracic width. It is cardiothoracic ratio of less than 0.5. The rule only applies to posterior anterior chest x-rays as anterior posterior film exaggerate heart size. So you should not draw any conclusions about heart size from an anterior posterior film. If the heart occupies more than 50% of the thoracic width on a posterior anterior chest x-ray, then this suggests abnormal enlargement, which is cardiomegaly. Cardiomegaly can occur for a wide variety of reasons, including fall filler disease, cardiomyopathy, pulmonary hypertension, and pericardial effusion. Assess heart bodies. Inspect the bodies of the heart, which should be well defined in healthy individuals. The right atrium makes up most of the right heart body. The left ventricle makes up most of the left heart body. The heart bodies may become difficult to distinguish from the lung fills as a result of various pathological processes. For example, consolidation, with, which causes increased opacity of the lung tissue. Loss of definition of the right heart body is associated with right middle lobe consolidation. Loss of definition of the left heart border is associated with lingular consolidation. This is a chest extra showing cardiomegaly. As you can see, the cardiothoracic ratio is greater than 0.5 here. Diaphragm. The right hemidiaphragm is in most cases higher than the left in health individuals as a result of the underlying liver. The stomach underlines the left hemidiaphragm and is best identified by the gastric bubble located within it. The diaphragm should be indistinguishable from the underlying liver in healthy individuals on an erect chest x-ray. However, if free gas is present often as a result of bowel perforation, air accumulates under the diaphragm causing it to lift and become visibly separate from the liver. If you see free gas under the diaphragm, you should seek urgent senior review as per the imaging, for example, CT abdomen will likely be required to identify the source of free gas. 
There are some conditions which give the appearance of free gas under the diaphragm, such as pseudonemoperitoneum or chilaiditis syndrome, which involves the colon becoming positioned between the liver and the diaphragm, resulting in the appearance of free gas under the diaphragm because the bowel wall and diaphragm become indistinguishable due to their proximity. As a result, the imaging needs to be considered in the context of the patient's history and your findings on clinical examination. As a junior doctor, however, you should always discuss a scan that appears to show a free guest with a senior colleague immediately. The diagram showing pneumoperitoneum, as you can see, there is air under the diaphragm here. And this is chilaiditis sinus, where bowel comes in between the diaphragm. Costophrenic angles. The costophrenic angle are formed from the dome of each hemidiaphragm and the lateral chest wall. In a healthy individual, the costophrenic angle should be clearly visible on a normal chest x-ray as a well-defined acute angle. Loss of this acute angle, sometimes referred to as costophrenic blunting, can suggest the presence of fluid or consolidation in the area. Costophrenic blunting can also occur secondary to lung hyperinflation, seen in diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, as a result of diaphragmatic flattening and subsequent loss of the acute angle. This is a chest X-ray showing costophrenic blunting that is secondary to pneumonia. Then, if for everything else, so you try to take note of the mediastinal contours. The mediastinum contains the heart, great vessels, lymphoid tissue, and a number of potential spaces where pathology can occur. The exact boundaries of the mediastinum aren't particularly visible on a chest x-ray. However, there are some important structures that you should assess. Aortic knuckle, left lateral edge of the aorta as it arches back over the left main bronchus. Loss of definition of the aortic knuckle's contours can be caused by an aneurysm. Aortopulmonary window. The aortopulmonary window is a space located between the arc of the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. This space can be lost as a result of mediastinal lymphadenopathy, which is malignancy. Aortic knuckle and aortopulmonary window. So, the chest of showing the aortic knuckle and aortopulmonary window. Bones. Inspect the visible skeletal structures looking for any abnormalities such as fractures or lytic lesions. Soft tissues. Inspect the soft tissues for any obvious abnormalities such as a large hematoma, tubes, valve, pacemakers. Tubes. Nasogastric tubes are something you'll often be asked to assess on a chest x-ray to confirm it is safe for feeding. Lines. E.g. artificial lines such as central line, ECG cables. Artificial valve such as aortic valve replacement, pacemaker often located below the left clavicle. So that's all about how to treat a chest x-ray. Thank you.